Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation. We have x cubed minus x minus 2, which is cubic, equals 1 over x, which is rational. You can also call it the reciprocal function. And what makes this equation interesting is the fact that we kind of have two types of equations that are equal to each other. So we're going to be looking at the intersection points. Are there any intersection points? Let's find out. First of all, we need to talk about the domain, which x values can be solutions and which ones cannot be solutions. There's only one exception, and that is x equals 0. Because at x equals 0, uh, the right-hand side is undefined. And so you don't want x to be 0. And if x equals 0, the left-hand side gives us negative 2, so there's no point, but we still have to kind of state that. We need to make sure x does not equal 0 and it's not going to equal 0. Okay, under those conditions, we can go ahead and solve this problem. How do you solve these types of equations? Easy. You just cross multiply because why not, right? Let's go ahead and do it. And this is going to turn into something interesting. So we're going to multiply x cubed minus x minus 2 by x, and that's going to equal 1. That's how cross multiplication is done, right? In other words, we're multiplying both sides by x. That's what cross multiplication means. When you distribute the x from right or from left, doesn't matter, you get x to the fourth minus x squared minus 2x equals 1. Now, if you put everything on the same side, you'll get a quartic. Even if you don't put everything on the left-hand side, you still have a quartic because the highest power is 4. So quartic is not a word that's used very commonly unless you're dealing with competitions or you're studying, I don't know, maybe abstract algebra or something like that, right? So, how do you solve the quartic equation? Well, let's talk about it. First of all, this is a depressed quartic. What does that mean? Is it under stress? No. It just means it does not have x cubed. And that's a good thing. So, one thing you can do is try to use the quartic formula. What is the quartic formula? Is there a quartic formula? Yes. Actually, if you look it up, uh, kind of Google it, or any other search engine, I guess, but Google is so common, right? You will find there's a huge, huge formula. I believe they have a picture of it, which you have to scroll to the right like crazy. It's amazingly like crazy. It's huge. I mean, unbelievable, right? And imagine if there was a quintic formula, imagine how big that would be. It would probably take several pages, hundreds of pages of the book. Anyways, so... With the quartic formula, you can pretty much plug in numbers, but it's too big and kind of useless. You don't really need to do it. So you, you can look for other options. For example, one option is if there are any rational solutions, you can go ahead and check them. How do you check for rational solutions? There's something called rational root theorem, which I called RRT. And you check the constant term. If it's a monic polynomial, the coefficient of the highest power, is one, it's easier because you only have to focus on the constant term. And so he's basically looking at factors of negative one. <laughs> well, there's only two numbers, one and negative one. So if one of them can be a solution, they are basically potential solutions, then we're good. Let's plug it in. If X is one, what happens? One minus one minus two minus one, these two cancel out, we end up with negative three. So negative one is not a solution. What about negative one? Let's check it out. One, now when you square negative one, it's gonna be one, but there's a minus sign. Here it's gonna be a plus sign and minus sign. Uh-oh, we're so close, but this is one. Uh-oh, that's not a solution either. So these do not did not work, which means we do not have a rational solution. We can't find a solution from here, but we can safely say that, okay, there are no rational solutions, which makes this problem harder, right? Okay, another option. And I would probably call this my first method because the second method will be obviously more interesting. So stick around, okay? So I'm going to do the following. I'll try to factor this, okay? How can I factor something like this? Well, I'm just going to assume that there are two quadratics. And that kind of makes sense because if you think about it, a quartic will have four complex roots. And those complex roots come in, con conjugate pairs. And of course, uh, in the case of four, 
you're going to have two pairs. And we can kind of put those pairs together and come up with a quadratic. So yes, this can always be factored into two. So maybe we can write it something like x squared plus ax plus b. And then the other one is just going to be x squared Okay, you don't need to use cx because minus ax plus c will do the trick. You know why? Because this will get rid of the x cubed. This meaning, I hope you can see this, right? Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. When you multiply x squared by negative ax, you're going to get negative ax cubed. And when you multiply ax by x squared, you're going to get positive ax cubed. They're going to cancel out, leaving us with no x cubed. Make sense? So this only gives us three variables. When we distribute we're going to get the following. Let's go ahead and find out. x to the fourth, x cubed cancels out. You don't have to worry about it. Plus cx squared. And now we're done with the x squared and then ax cubed. We don't worry about it. Minus a squared x squared plus acx. And then bx squared minus abx plus bc. We know that bc is negative 1, but can bc be 1 plus minus 1? They can be. That doesn't mean they are rational solutions, but they probably are if there's a good way to factor this. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's first uh, put the x squared terms together. I would try to make it in alphabetical order, but I want to write the b and c first because a squared is, has a minus sign like this. And then we have the ac minus ab x. See, this is kind of like a general way to factor it. And of course, we used it. And plus BC. You see, underlining helps because you know which terms you already used. Now, when you set this equal to that, you realize that the coefficient of x squared is supposed to be negative 1, and the coefficient of x is supposed to be negative 2, and the constant term is supposed to be negative 1. This gives you three equations and three variables. Nice. We're on the right track. From here, we get this which I can turn into this one. Let's go ahead and box it because we're going to use it later. And from the second one, we get this. I can factor out an A and then finally divide by A. Get C minus B equals negative 2 over A. Let's box it. We're going to use it. And finally, we have BC equals negative 1. Now, how do you put these two together? I mean, three, right? these three equations together. You can make them a triangle. So I'll take, I'll write this as C plus B. It doesn't matter. You know what? It's no big deal. I can just keep it as is. B plus C is A squared minus 1. And then C minus B is negative 2 over A. We're going to go ahead and add these two equations. And then B is going to cancel out. We're going to get 2C or not 2C. And when we add them, we're going to get something like a squared minus 1 minus 2 over A. And this can be actually simplified how? We can write it as A cubed minus A minus 2 over A. And then multiply both sides by 1 half. And you're going to get the C value from here. Awesome. Similarly, you can get the B value and multiply the B and C. Set it equal to negative 1. You'll get a cubic, I guess, by cubic or something like that. And from here, hopefully, you can solve for ABC. It's pretty long, time-consuming kind of boring, maybe a little bit, but I think it's good, helpful for those of you who are studying algebra, especially if you're new to these equations, that would definitely help you. But here's my suggestion, which is usually the second method. Let's go ahead and take a look at this cortic from another angle, okay? You probably noticed that, right? Didn't you? We got by distributing, we got the following. Of course, I kind of avoided the easy way out because it's not always possible. Some equations are harder to solve than others. So here's the idea. We can go ahead and actually put everything besides x to the fourth on the right-hand side. And guess what this gives you? Perfect squares. Normally, you would add something to make it a perfect square if you're trying to solve a quartic. Is it called Ferrari's method? Something like that. Anyways, I forgot. But Nadia Fan mentioned it a number of times in my videos. You'll probably see... In one of the recent videos, I think I also pinned one of the comments, which was helpful. And I try to include the link. I hope YouTube does not remove the link that I included. Anyways, this is what we have. The right-hand side is x plus 1 to the second power. And ta-da! This is where the magic begins. We can go ahead and square with both sides. Considering absolute values, we're going to have two solutions from here. 
One of them is just going to be x squared equals x plus 1. The other one is going to be x squared equals negative x minus 1. The opposite of x plus 1, because when you square, you get the same thing. Awesome. Do you smell the golden flavor? I hope you do. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. Uh-oh. Come on, notability or the pen, whatever. Whoever is doing this static electricity thing is super annoying, but it happens all the time. I don't know why. I think after, like, finish the video, come on, already. x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. x equals negative b. Plus minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Notice that. And the other one is going to give you complex solutions. And guess what? Those are going to be the cube roots of 1, right? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4. You see, that's going to be root 3i divided by 2. So we have four solutions, but only two of them are real. Let's go ahead and I hope I included a graph. Yes, I did. Okay, awesome. You can see the two intersection points that are real, and hopefully you recognize the golden ratio. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.